When I was little, I wanted to be an engineer. And inspired by the great work and the respect they earned for it. All of my friends had similar kind of dreams. One wanted to be a doctor, another one a pilot, another one a businessman. These are the popular choice among the kids today. But I have yet to find a kid who wants to be an artisan. Artisans are the face of a nation. They represent a nation's culture and heritage through their creative works such as the art, craft, and design outfits. So why nobody wants to be an artisan when they grow up? The main reason is artisans make very little money and they have uncertain future. People don't encourage their children to be artisan. Similarly, school discourage this kind of employment. I personally know one artisan named Sabina Choudhury. She lives in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Sabina makes beautifully designed men's and women outfits that celebrate the beautiful culture of Bangladesh. She makes only $100 per month by selling these products. But 25 years ago, things were different. She made $250 US dollar per month selling the same exact products. Back then, she could afford good food, education, and better health care for her family. So how come over the years, her income reduced by over a half? Savina is an entrepreneur. She has a basic education, but she doesn't know what entrepreneurs means. She's destined to live this life because the world is changing, but she doesn't know how to adapt. She lacks the marketing skills and understanding of market demands. Savina is one of 100,000 artisans in Bangladesh who are experiencing the same exact problem. In developing countries like Bangladesh, the problem of globalization is putting artisans completely out of business. And this is happening because of three major influences. Education, media, and finance. Education both influences and changes world's perception of art. It has also impact on local culture and heritage. Before the British colonial period in Southeast Asia, children learn art, craft, agriculture, religion, mathematics, and history. People were more connected with their community, and they had more humanity because this education focused relationship. Later, the British changed and imposed new education system that benefited the industrial system and economy. Locals start disconnecting from their community and they become alienated from each other and from their own culture. As time went on, consumer no longer knew who was making the product, why they made it, and what was the story behind it. People forget their own culture and custom. Their next major storm hit in early 90s when Bangladesh has gradually entered to the global education system. Private universities and English type schools were set up. These institutions were highly influenced by Western culture. People considered them as the benchmark of society. Working for multinational companies become every youth's dream. Today especially, younger generation is highly influenced by this company's Western value-driven culture. While Western design products were flying off the racks, traditional products become outdated. Youth forget their own identity and become imitator of Westerner. So how can an artisan like Sabina sustain livelihood and carry on the culture by creating things with hands? It is not all about artisans like Sabina who are affected. It is about us, our identity, our tradition, our culture, which define us as a nation, which differentiate us from the rest of the world. The media also caused alienation of traditional culture. Artisans cannot compete with big businesses as these big businesses taking over all the TV channels for their promotion. 
all TV shows, movies, dramas, fashion shows, and advertisement promoting 24-7 the wealthy lifestyle of Western countries. The media influence people's perception of better lifestyle. People no longer valuing and buying goods that celebrate the unique culture of Bangladesh. In the last 25 years, Bangladesh has gradually entered to the global, uh, global satellite channels. As we started watching Saturday morning cartoons, artisans like Sabina had started losing their customers to the Western design products. People start buying these products because they have been overexposed and they are forced to like them. It is true, throughout the world, people buy what they see on TV and this overshadows tradition. Additionally, artisans lack the skills and financial capacity to compete with big businesses. Artisans are the people who work to make a noble living with their craft. People who deserve respect how they perpetuate their culture by creating things with hands and creating things with love. Financial differentiation makes it impossible for an artisan to survive in 21st century. Global Brands has multi-million dollar marketing budget and use media-driven celebrity endorsement to promote their products. Whereas an artisan has very little visibility. Global Brands come to Dhaka to set up shops so that they can make cheaper products. Then they put millions and millions of dollars to showcase these products. Whereas an artisan needs months of human effort to make one single product. But how they can sell it, what it actually worth it, when they're competing with big businesses. Bangladesh is only one of many countries affected by this global phenomenon. We need to cherish our culture in a globalized world. I'm not asking you to stop globalization because at this point it's not possible. What I'm asking to change your point of view towards your buying behavior. When we are about to buy something, our first priority should be local artisans. As a consumer, we are responsible for this. In supporting artisans, we're giving them an opportunity to develop their products. I personally believe if we start right now, very soon these artisans will compete with global brands. As I said earlier, I wanted to be an engineer, but I didn't end up pursuing engineering as my career. Instead, I completed my bachelor on marketing. I start my career with a marketing agency. I was unsatisfied with country's big business attitudes and not doing enough to fix the problem our people are facing from. So I quit the job. I start working for underprivileged artisan in Bangladesh. I provide them with consultation on marketing and product uh, on marketing and product innovation and connect their beautiful works to the global audience. This is something give them opportunity to live their dream and the confidence they need to carry on their work. I would like to show you a special bow tie named Tiger Bow, made with the traditional fabrics of Bangladesh. Bow tie is recognized as a Western product, but this specific bow tie is a reflection of Bangladeshi culture the reflection of the soul and the design of artisans. This bow is made by Sabina herself. Since I start working with her, her income has gone up from $100, $100 to $150 US dollar per month. But it is not it was. But it is a beginning. These people deserve to live their dream, the dream of being an artisan. By supporting local artisan, we can support community that raised us, preserve the uniqueness of our respective countries, and also celebrate the diversity of this planet. If we support artisans like Sabina, I believe very soon Sabina's daughter will one day be proud to tell her mother, I want to be an artisan. Thank you.